Now once you're in the live production interface, it's basically broken up into four different sections. Along the top is the monitoring section, allowing you to monitor the incoming video signals and the two independent outputs available in 3Play 425. Below that is the clip list. This is where all the events that you mark with in and out points will show up and all of the camera angles available for each event will be available for playback. Below that is the playlist. This is the area for creating melts or highlight reels with dissolves between the replays and audio music beds. And then along the bottom you have the dashboard, which can be used with the mouse to control the 3 Play 425, but also works well as a visual cue to the state of the system during operation when using the control surface. The control surface is also broken into a few different sections. The record button here at the top allows you to start and stop the record process. You also have the ability to go to three different modes when working in the 3Play. You can be in the live mode when you're passing live video through the system and monitoring that live video. You can be in the clip list mode to review events and look at those events from multiple camera angles at variable speeds. Or you can be in the playlist mode for playing back the melts or highlight reels that you've created. You also have the ability to select which output you're currently going to be using, either A or B, and you do have the ability to gang them together or to use A and B at the same time. You have some qualifier keys over here for manipulating the clips inside of the 3Play itself. You have your speed control here, either static speed controls, preset speeds that you can select with a button, or you can dynamically control speed playback by using the T-bar here on the control surface. There are transport controls for controlling video playback for starting and stopping or for getting through the events or the clips within an event. You also have a jog wheel for queuing things up and looking at clips frame by frame. An in and an out button for creating events. And then some qualifier keys, the alt key and the shift and the control key, which are also used in the function of the three play. Now let's go ahead and start out in the live mode and go back to the interface. Now in our preview area, you have the ability to configure the video inputs that you connected before you came into the live production area. And you've got a small gear in the upper right hand corner of the four video inputs coming in. Clicking on that gear opens the panel to configure that particular input. Now you can use this pop down to choose the resolution and format of the video as it's going to be coming in. And you do have the ability to rename that input so you can give it a distinctive name so it's easy to tell what camera it is during the live production. There are also proc amp controls allowing you to control brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation, and some white balance controls as well. You also have audio controls here allowing you to configure the type of audio that's coming in and the level of that audio. Now you have the ability to use time code with your 3Play 425 and you've got a production clock right up here. You do have the ability to open the production clock and you've got a few options in here. First of all, you have two production clocks available in the 3Play. This is the main time of day production clock and you do have the ability to subtract 12 hours from that clock. So you can either be in 24 hour time or 12 hour time. And you have the ability to start a secondary clock. This is the production time display. So here we click these on and we set a start time and an end time. So I'm going to set the start time of my event, say, to uh, 4 o'clock. And I'll set the end time of the event. Let's go PM. Uh, we'll make our start time 3 o'clock. And we'll make our end time 4 o'clock. So we'll drag that up to 3 o'clock. And then 4 o'clock is my out time. We want that to be PM. So let's get that up to 4 PM. And now we have a start and a stop time for the live production. And when we close that down, you see we now have a secondary production clock here. And this is now a countdown to the start of our production at 3 o'clock. And once the production starts, it will become a countdown to the end of the production at 4 o'clock. Now this production clock is not only visible here, but it's also visible on the multi-viewer in the lower right hand corner. Now we can go ahead and open up the gear for the clock and also tell it that we want to use time code. Now if you're not using external time code, it's going to stamp time of day time code down 
on all of the clips for you. But you do have the ability to use external time code and you can bring that in on input three, mic or line. And if, when you bring that in, it's an audio track coming in on input three A. And as soon as you engage it, you're going to see these numbers turn light blue. And that's a visual cue that, yes, we are using external time code. So you can either use the time of day time code that's being stamped down automatically or set it up to use external time code from right here. You can also configure the outputs of the three play by clicking on the gear above the second output monitor. This brings up the output configuration panel and you have a tab for output A and output B. They can be configured separately. You do have the ability to rename those outputs and some proc amp controls on each output independently as well as volume control. There's also a tab for the multi-viewer. The multi-viewer is connected to the HDMI port on the back of the device. And again, this can be set up in a number of ways. It can be set up to just look at the recorded cameras. Now I have four cameras coming in so it's going to show me all four cameras. You can do the one to four camera option as well, or you can just tell it that you only want to see the outputs on the multi-viewer. You also have the ability to adjust the resolution of that secondary multi-view output to give you the maximum flexibility when setting up your system. This is also where you have controls for the Genlock, and again, you can bring in Genlock. The three play supports both tri-level high definition and bi-level standard definition Genlock and the Genlock controls can be adjusted here.